This week we're going to have a look at Mercedes-Benz, the German luxury car manufacturer that has been public since the early 90s. This is a company that has a long history in the stock market already, it's very much an established player in the automotive industry. So let's see where this company is currently at when it comes to their financials and let's see whether or not we think this company is a good investment coming into the future. Now. Diving right into their numbers, what we can see here is, the, is their revenue and we already see massive numbers here for Mercedes-Benz. So in 2012 they had a revenue of 114 billion euros which has risen all the way to 133 billion. Now you might have noticed there a little uh, up and down movement here which we can also see when we look at the graph on the right here. What we see here is that they actually peaked with when it comes to their revenue. Uh, somewhere here in 19, 2019, after which they lost quite a, a a big number of market share here. Now, I think the most notable thing that happened in the automotive industry is that the diesel and the gasoline operated cars are actually slowly but surely being transitioned out and are making way for the electric car transition. And in 2012, especially like uh, companies like Tesla have been really emerging and disrupting the automotive industry which is not an easy feat because the automotive industry has been very very well established and is very hard to get into. So let's look at the numbers here. So overall their revenue has been growing by about 2% which is to say it's in line with inflation. Their business hasn't really grown as a whole but this is mostly because of this drop here in 2020. Now, on the contrary though, what we also see here when we look at their EBIT, so this is, this is uh, not EBITDA, this is without depreciation and without, without amortization. So any investment that they do into additional equipment, additional plants and additional factories, those assets are not being depreciated in this number. So when we just look at an EBITDA number, it will be lower than this is, but um, they mostly work in EBIT, so I'm going to give them that as well. We're going to be looking at their EBIT number as opposed to their EBITDA. And when we look at their earnings before interest and taxes, in 2012 we see a EBIT of about 9 billion, which has risen all the way up to 29 billion here in 2021. An absolute, absolute record year for them. And it was noted in their 10K that this is mostly because of the COVID-19 pandemic where they reported a decline in sales. But even though they had a decline in sales, the uh, prices for cars have been very much moving up. The material cost is very, very high. There were just a very big shortage of, of cars around the world, including secondhand cars, but also newer cars which um, allowed Mercedes-Benz to really capitalize on this shortage and ask for some pretty high prices, which really gave them a very high earnings here in 2021. Now, is this reflective of their overall business? I'm not entirely sure. I think not entirely. I'm definitely going to give them uh, a bit of a penalty there when we look at the projections into the future. But nevertheless, in 2021 was an absolute record year for them. And I think this is really good to see. I think the main thing that I mentioned as well is that this earnings is driven, even though there was a decline in unit sales, it was driven by the luxury car brands as well as the electric vehicles, which Mercedes-Benz has also very much been investing in recently. So overall, we see the EBIT has grown 14.2%, while revenue has grown about 2%. This means that their margins are very, very much increasing and they are becoming a lot more established. They have a lot less costs to go around so like the infrastructure is pretty much in place it's probably mostly autom automated and they can really press their their costs to make sure that they have as much earnings at the end of the day as they can probably muster um, looking at the debt level we can see it's been growing by about 5.4 percent which is growing not as um, nearly as fast as their earnings is which is very much a good um, a good thing to see because that debt has been quite high of course if you go into the car manufacturing business you do need to run all the all the plants and all the equipment and all that all those kind of things and all those kind of things need a lot of upfront investment which is very much what we saw here with mercedes-benz as well they've been trying to deleverage um, for the last two years and successfully so but of course a company like this has a lot of debt because you do need to do a lot of upfront investment 
Also, they have some excess cash on hand for whenever they want to pay some of their bills or whenever they want to pay some of their debt back or any of their outstanding uh, bonds are reaching maturity so that they can pay those bonds back. Their excess cash has been very much increasing over the last few years, which is very much what we like to see. It kind of cautions the risk that we have as an investor here. Looking at market cap, on average, it's grown about 6% which is not really that impressive but then again they also pay out a big portion of their earnings in dividends so that is definitely decreasing their share price as well overall though about six percent is definitely underperforming the stock market but let's see exactly what the free cash flow is here in a little bit looking at enterprise value it's grown relatively in line with the market cap here because that debt has been relatively stable over the years and their cash has been increasing. So by and large, it's in line with market cap. Now enterprise value is the market cap to which we add the debt and subtract the cash. It's the entire value of the business in a way that like, for example, a competitor, and in all fairness, there's not many competitors in the automotive business that are able to actually buy out Mercedes-Benz because I think they're one of the bigger ones. Um, but let's say a company did come around and wanted to buy Mercedes-Benz. Of course, they had to buy the shares from the market, but they also have to incur the debt that Mercedes-Benz has on the balance sheet. And that's pretty much what enterprise value means. It's the entire value of the business. EV EBITDA ratio. How many years does it take for Mercedes-Benz to completely pay back their own share price, to completely buy their own enterprise value back simply based on their earnings and we can see here on average they have a relatively high multiple which is quite often what we see with a luxury brand or established brand is that they trade at a premium because of how safe and how well uh, established they are and for mercedes-benz this is no different they on average trade at a multiple of 15.9 times actually here in 2021 they traded five times because of their record earnings and that's really the only reason there is because this number is very much an outlier uh, but overall they have been trading at 16 times that level as showing scary 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 numbers i do have to say i do not like that that level and i very much think that they should deliver themselves a little bit as they have been doing into the um, for their credit um, in the last two years but it's still exceeding the three times ratio. Now maybe we can give them a little bit of slack for this because they are so big and because they are so established. Um, maybe we accept a little bit more higher leverage than three times, but still I think it's a bit in the risky area and it's definitely a, a, a red flag for me. So looking at the cash flow, how much cash money do they make from simply running their business? So the cash flow from operation, it includes everything that they need to actually build their cars. It includes the materials, it includes the manufacturing costs, it includes everything. How many uh, money do they make from simply running their business the way it is? So we can see here in 2012, they have been obtaining 7.5 billion euros of cash flow, which has risen all the way to 24 billion here in 2021, which is an absolutely record number. So looking at their capital expenditure, we can see, and this is a capital expenditure is basically all the uh, research and development that a company does in addition to any new plans or equipment or uh, a new brush of paint for their factories or some new maintenance for any of their cars. This is all the, the cost that comes with maintaining and even uh, future proofing the business. And we can see that their capital expenditure has very much been decreasing for the past 10 years, even though their revenue numbers have been steadily increasing and their earnings has been as well. So this means they are very much uh, reducing the cost of operating their business, which is very much what we like to see. They're becoming more efficient. Their margins are increasing. Looking at free cash flow, we can see that free cash flow has been relatively stable around the one to five billion dollar mark up until 2020, where they really started to make some record level earnings. Shares have been very stable over the past 10 years. No movement there whatsoever free cash flow now this is of course the interesting part for any shareholder because this is your pro rata ownership of the company at the end of the year when everything is said and done and all the investment have been made this is the cash that is available to you as a shareholder now mercedes-benz actually pays out about half of their profits in dividends so this means for 2021 they actually paid out a five euro dividend to their shareholders which gives them a yield of about seven to eight percent which is absolutely massive 
uh, a massive starting dividend for any company really and add to that as well that I think there is some room to grow for Mercedes-Benz as well as they're transitioning into the electric vehicle um, business. So the rest of their free cash flow they very much used it to pay down their debt which is very much what I think they should do and I very much um, applaud that decision. So looking at the price per share, we can see they started off with 41 euros and 32 cents here in 2012, which has risen to 68 euros and 50 cents. Um, an increase annually of about 6%, but of course this does not include the dividend. This is just the share price as seen on the stock market. Now what we see here as well is they definitely had better days here in 2015 with a share price of 77 euros and 58 cents, which has come down a little bit since then. But it's been on the rise for the last few years and I think the price is even higher than the 2021 number. But we'll have a look at that in a little bit. Free cash flow yield on average has been seven, uh, just a little higher than 7%. For the last two years it's been a lot higher because the free cash flow has been that high. Uh, it kind of skewed the numbers there and I think it's going to maybe come down in the future. Either because their share price is increasing or because their earnings or free cash flow is coming down. Exactly which one is true, I'm not entirely sure, but I think this will definitely come down a little bit. On average, it's been 7.7%. So that brings us to forecasting this business, which is a bit tricky because I think the last year for them was an, absolutely out, an absolute outlier. So the EBIT that they have in 2021 was 29 billion, a way, way, way beyond any number that they've printed in the past 10 years. And this number is very much coming down. When I look at the uh, third quarter results here for Mercedes-Benz in 2022, they had an earnings of just over 5 billion euros. So I'm going to say that I'm going to multiply that by four times to complete the entire year. And I think for 2022, they will have an earnings of 20,000 and not 30,000. I'm going to reduce their earnings by 33% for the year 2022. But afterwards, I think they do have some growth there. I think they can very much move into the electric vehicles or the luxury cars and really uh, have some pretty good growth there. On average, they've been growing about 14.2%, which is again, mostly skewed by this very last number. But I'm going to go ahead and say that I think there is a market for them here in the electric vehicle space. And I'm going to give them 8% for the upcoming five years and 6% for the year after that. I'm going to give them a market multiple of 10 times. And even when I look historically, this has been a bit of a low number, right? This is the number that they've been had in the initial five years of our historic average between 2012 and 2016, because for the last four years after that, they have been skyrocketed in their multiple. Um, but I think this is definitely going to come down, which is also what we saw here because of their earnings growing so much. So I think actually about the 10 times range is probably the most accurate and also still conservative estimate for this business. So I'm going to give him a 10 times. This gives me an enterprise value of 370 billion to which we subtract the debt at the cash gives us a market cap of about 300 billion divided by the amount of shares outstanding gives me a share price 10 years from now of 280 euros and 80 cents. Now for cash flow, we're going to do a similar thing as well. And I'm going to say that their free cash flow is going to come down from their record high number in 2021. And I'm going to say it comes down quite a bit. Now I'm going to give their earnings a haircut of 33%. So I think for their free cash flow, I'm going to give them a haircut of about 40% because I want to be conservative with my estimates. So I'm going to give them a free cash flow in 2022 of six euros per share. And I'm going to grow that for 10% because as we've seen with Mercedes-Benz, even though they've been increasing their uh, earnings, they have also been very much decreasing their costs. And I think if we add those two together, we can see a faster growing free cash flow compared to their earnings. So I'm going to give their free cash flow a growth of 10% year over year for the first five. And then I'm going to reduce it down to 8% in the future. Free cash flow yield, I'm going to give them 6%, which is... Um, I think in line with what they've been doing historically by and large, if we take away these two outliers here, 2020, 2021. Um, 
Now, of course, we can be a bit more conservative and say it's going to be 7% to really get that conservatism in there. Um, yeah, I think that's just what I'll do as well to really make my estimate as conservative as possible. I'm going to give them 7%, which gives me a stock price 10 years from now of 187 euros and 81 cents. So right now on the market, I can buy as many shares as I want for 72 euros. Which has come up a little bit actually from a 2021 high, but I think it's still very much within reasonable levels. Because if we look at the both models that we have, so the enterprise value as well as the free cash flow model and cut them both down to half, I get an average share price of 233 euros and 80 cents. Now, when I look simply at this number on the stock market, when it comes to appreciation in share price, I can expect a return of 12.5% annually, year over year, simply for holding this stock. But of course, like I mentioned, Mercedes-Benz actually is very much cash flow positive. They are generating cash. And because of that, if you hold the stock, of course, you get a percentage of this uh, free cash flow as well, simply for holding the share. And every single year, they pay at about half of their earnings in dividends. So this is what you will be expecting as a shareholder. And there will be deleveraging themselves which is also beneficial for their valuation which is also again beneficial for you as the shareholder and if i include that free cash flow as well into our projection i actually estimate that mercedes-benz will return on average 23.6 percent irr the internal rate of return now on average i always say that the stock market returns about 10 percent and i think mercedes-benz is um returning quite 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 a bit more than that number and i think this is still with relatively conservative estimates now i'm still going to give them 20,000 of ebit in 2022 which even though it's a haircut from 2021 um it's definitely a lot higher than they've been doing historically so if, if you actually do not believe this and you think the haircut should be a lot bigger than this then maybe the valuation is nowhere near as attractive. But I think simply by looking at the results from 2022 so far, I think this is an accurate projection for their earnings and in, uh, as well as an accurate projection for their free cash flow. So when let's see what happens if the price goes up or comes down a little bit. Now, if the price comes down from 72 euros by about 10% to about 65, it gives me a 25% IRR, which, at which point I will be very, very interested in this stock. But even right now, I think 23% for the estimate that we've given it is very, very lucrative of an investment. And I think Mercedes-Benz is definitely an interesting stock to look at into the future. So this was Mercedes-Benz. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.